Okay, so we have connective tissue. It's a large group of tissues. Then we'll look at skeletal tissue and we'll look at, um, uh, so we'll look at muscle tissue and then we'll look at uh, neural tissue and those are short, right? So connective tissue has three basic categories underneath it. We have what we call connective tissue proper. And then we have fluid connective tissue. And then we have supporting connective tissue. Okay. So we are going to go and look at the subdivisions underneath those, and then we're going to look at examples of those subdivisions. Right? So under connective tissue proper, we have loose connective tissue. So loose connective tissue proper, or we could just say loose connective tissue. And then we have dense connective tissue proper, or we can just say dense connective tissue, right? And then there's examples of those that we need to know. So under loose connective tissue, one example that we need to know is adipose. Now, there are other loose connective tissue propers, but I'm not going to go into those other ones because we're already learning a lot about tissues. Dense connective tissue, <clears throat> an example of that is irregular dense connective tissue. And again, there's more of those, but we're not going to go into the other ones. Under fluid connective tissue, we have blood, we have lymph, and we have interstitial fluid. All of those fluids are similar, but there's some major, there's a few major differences, so we're going to talk about those. Then we have supporting connective tissue, and supporting connective tissue is either cartilage or it's bone, right? So we're going to talk about each one of those. There's three different types of cartilage. We have hyaline, elastic, and fibrous, right? So we'll talk about each one of those. And then bone, which is gonna be in chapter six, we have compact and spongy. So we'll look at those just a little bit, all right. So now, before we go into each one of these, Let's go and look at what connective tissue actually is, right? Where is connective tissue found? So first of all, connective tissue is very deep in your body. All connective tissue is deep. It's not on the surface of your skin. It's not lining the inside of a passageway. It's not exposed to a surface. It's deep. It's somewhere deep in your body. Okay. And it has um, several different functions. The first thing, because it's so deep, it's going to fill spaces. It fills spaces. It can also support other tissues. That fluid connective tissue, like blood, it can transport substances. And we're going to see some cells in there can actually store nutrients.
right? So those are the functions. We're going to go into each one of those. Now, connective tissue proper has um, some very distinct characteristics, right? So there's three um, components to connective tissue. So the first component of connective tissue are the specialized cells. When we start looking at the different types of connective tissue, we're going to see that one cell called adipocyte, that's a fat cell, that stores triglycerides. So that stores fat, stores energy. Whereas we look at a cartilage cell, um, and that's going to, the cartilage cell is not going to do that. The cartilage cell is going to help to produce the um, matrix of the cartilage, to produce the bulk of the cartilage, okay? Um, we're going to see blood cells. Blood cells, like the red blood cell, carries oxygen. So all these cells are very specialized. So we'll see different cells in different tissues. The chondrocyte is in the cartilage, right? The um, red blood cell is in the blood, okay? The adipocyte um, is in connective tissue proper. So we're going to see, we're going to see specialized cells in each different type of connective tissue. The next thing is that they all have protein fibers. Protein fibers, there's three different types of fibers. There's collagen fibers. There's elastic fibers. And there's reticular fibers. So we're going to look at those fibers and we're going to see, okay, what is their function of each one? So some of this connective tissue will have just one type. Some of the connective tissue will have all three types, right? So it's just depending on what tissue it is, it'll have, a pro it'll have these protein fibers. And then the last component of connective tissue we call ground substance. Ground substance is just what's in between those cells and fiber. What type of substance is in there? Is it watery? Well, if it's watery, it's probably fluid connective tissue. Is it syrupy? If it's syrupy, it's probably connective tissue proper. Or is it um, semi-solid? If it's semi-solid, it's probably in cartilage. And then is it, is it just flat out hard and solid, that's bone, right? So the matrix is going to be different in each different type of connective tissue. So we're going to look at that. Now the protein fibers and the ground substance together make up what we call the matrix. So as I'm talking, you'll probably hear me talk about the matrix. All right, so let's get going and let's look at that first category of connective tissue, which we called connective tissue proper, right? So I'm going to, we're going to look at specialized cells, protein fibers, and ground substance. So this is just an example of a connective tissue proper. Uh, it's actually areolar tissue, and it's not a tissue that you are going to be tested on. But it does have all the different types of <clears throat> cells. Um, there's a many, many different specialized cells. So one of the things that you need to memorize for lecture are what are the functions of these specialized cells. What do they do? So I'm just going to show you several of these cells, right, that you have to memorize. Again, this is connective tissue proper. Uh, so we're seeing, first of all, we see this cell here. That's a macrophage. So the macrophage can be either fixed or free. If it's free, it's just floating around in the matrix. If it's fixed, then it's going to be attached to something in the matrix, probably the, the fibers, the protein fibers. 
Now macrophage, macro means big, phage means phagocytic. So its job is to engulf things. Like we saw that cell engulfing that bacterium. That's its job, it's to engulf things, right? Okay, so that's one thing. The, the, free, uh, the macrophage is a phagocytic cell. Now, we also see these cells right here. Those are adipose cells or adipocytes. Adipocytes. Okay. Adipocytes look like, they, they, people have said they look like a class ring because there's so many triglycerides in here that it pushes the nucleus off to the side. So the nucleus is like the stone of a class ring pushed off to the side, and then the rest of that cell is filled with those triglycerides. So it's yellow because fat's yellow. So what does um, adipocytes do then? What do those fat cells do? They store energy. They're storing triglycerides. They're storing energy. Okay. Um, we see another cell right here, this big, big cell right there, and that's called a fibroblast. So a fibroblast is going to produce the fibers. When we look in the cell here, we can see three distinct types of protein fibers. We have these long yellow ones here. Okay, those are called collagen fibers. Collagen fibers are bendy. They can bend. You have collagen fibers in many of your tissues. There's collagen fibers in your bone even. So your bone will bend a little bit before it snaps. Right? Collagen fibers are in your skin because your skin can bend. Right? So we have collagen fibers in many places. These other purple looking ones here those are called elastic fibers. The thin purple ones. Elastic fibers have the ability to stretch. So they can stretch. And after they're done stretching, they can go back to their normal position. Right? They stretch and then they go back. Your ears stretch and then it goes back, right? So that is, um, there's, there's elastic fibers in, in um, your ear. Then um, those fibroblasts are also making this last set of fibers, which are called reticular fibers. And reticular just means that they are um, branched and interconnected. So we can see all these interconnections here. So they have a little bit of stretchability too. They can stretch a little bit, but not as much as elastic but they can stretch from many directions because they're not just one long strand going in one direction. They're going in many directions. So you can get stretch in many directions with a reticular fiber, just not as much as with the elastic fiber. Okay. So those are the three different types of fibers and it's this fibroblast which makes those. It makes the fibers. It makes B for baby, fibers, baby fibers, right? It makes baby fibers. <laughs> then we have another cell that's called the fibrocyte. Uh, and the fibrocyte I don't really see on here. It's a more of a mature fibroblast and it just helps to maintain the fibers. So you might hear that term fibrocyte. It's a grown up fibroblast. So it doesn't make new fibers, but it'll maintain those fibers. Okay, another type of cell that we see uh, is called the mast cell, the mast cell. The mast cell is a cell that's very much like um, one of your white blood cells called the basocyte, basophil. But it's, it's a fixed, it's a cell that it stays in the tissue. It doesn't go in your blood at all. It just stays in the tissue. And it produces two substances called heparin and histamine. And what histamine and heparin do is they cause inflammation. So if that cell is damaged for some reason,
The mast cell will release histamine and heparin, and that will cause inflammation, which brings more fluid and more blood to the area. So that's what those mast cells do. So this is your typical connective tissue proper. There's all sorts of specialized cells. There's all sorts of um, fibers, protein fibers. And then the ground substance in between is going to be like a sticky, syrupy type of um, fluid, right? Or liquid. OK, now the, the, this, is, this picture itself is areolar tissue. And you have to know areolar tissue for the lecture exam because you need to know what the function of each one of these cells is. And you need to know um, the function of each one of those protein fibers. Okay. But the specific, when we look at specific connective tissue proper, we have loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue. Areolar tissue was a loose connective tissue. Another type of loose connective tissue is adipose tissue. So here we see adipose tissue. This is loose connective tissue proper. So when we go through these, we're going to look at the specialized cells. We're going to look to see if the um, fibers are necessary to talk about. And we're going to talk about the ground substance. We're going to go through each one of those characteristics throughout all of our connective tissues. So in adipose tissue, um, this is one of the pictures that you will see in your lab exam, this adipose tissue here. And we find adipose tissue, you need to know the location, and then you need to know the function of each one of these that I go through. So adipose tissue has all these adipocytes. And like I told you with, um, in the areolar tissue, it looks kind of like a class ring where that Nucleus has been shoved off to the side because it's so filled with triglycerides. So the function is that it, um, it stores energy, for sure. But the other thing that fat does in your body is it insulates. So you're not losing too much heat. And it also provides um, padding to be able to cushion shocks. You know, there's... We find it in below the skin. So here's a picture of the skin. And we can see that that's where it is underneath the skin. And so it's just, if, you, if something's hitting your skin, it's just providing a little bit of cushion. It's behind your eye. So if you hit your head and you get a concussion, at least your eyes are being you know, padded in the back by this fat. Okay. So on the lab exam, you would see this picture. You would see the location. You'd see this picture of where it's at. And you would see this picture of the tissue itself. You would have to identify it as, as adipose tissue in the lab exam. And then for lecture, you would have to give, um, you would have to be able to identify its location and then what are its functions. OK, then let's look at the, now let's look at the dense connective tissue proper. And so there's different subcategories under dense connective tissue proper, but the only one that I want you to um, recognize right now for um, the lab is dense irregular, dense irregular connective tissue. So an example where we find this dense, irregular connective tissue is in your skin right above that layer of fat. That's where we find it. We find it right above the layer of fat. In an area that's called the dermis. Okay, so dermis. And you're going to learn about the dermis in Chapter 5. Um, it's the deepest layer of your skin just before that adipose tissue. So its function is going to um, help to resist forces that are applied from many different directions. Resist forces applied from many different directions. So let's take a look at the dense irregular connective tissue. So in here, we see these fibers, collagen fibers, that are 
um, in several different directions. We see some are going this way, we see some are going this way, some are going this way, and some are face on, right? So they're going in many, many different directions. So that means that the dermis, that lower, that deepest level of your skin, has the ability to stretch in different directions, okay? Because of how those fibers are oriented. So you would have to identify this picture in lab for the lab exam. And then for lecture, you would have to say, where is it located and what does it do? As we go through the semester, we might touch upon some of the other um, tissues, but not for this uh, lecture exam. We might talk about dense regular connective tissue, which is right here, or we might talk about some elastic tissue, which is right here. But for this exam, both lecture and lab, we're going to stick to dense irregular connective tissue, okay, to try to keep it simple, simpler. All right. Then we have um, our next category. So we're done with connective tissue proper. Now we're going to talk about fluid connective tissue. So like I told you before, fluid connective tissue, uh, there's three different types of fluid connective tissue, blood, interstitial fluid, and then lymph. I'm going to talk about those three and why we would even call it connective tissue in just a second. But first, I want to show you blood. So this is blood. This is um, these cells here. These are the specialized cells. So the specialized cells for blood are red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Those are the specialized cells. In the matrix, we have, um, which, is, which is the protein fibers and the ground substance, uh, there's really not a lot of proteins out there. Uh, you do have a fluid out there, and that fluid is called plasma. So you have the fluid and the specialized cells, and that's called blood. So on the lab exam, you would identify this as blood, and you won't be seeing any terms that have blood on it. Okay, But you have to identify those as the specialized cells in blood. Now, why do we call blood a, um, a connective tissue? Because that just seems weird. It seems out of place. It's not supporting or you know, insulating or anything. It just it seems very out of place. Well, the reason for, that we call it connective tissue is that all three of those fluids connect together, right? So let's look at, here's a blood vessel. So inside the blood vessel, we have blood. Okay. Now the blood is moving along. The blood isn't just sitting there. It's moving through the blood vessel. And as it hits the edges of the blood vessel, it moves out into the interstitial fluid. So this is the interstitial fluid. Right? So when it's out there, when it's out in the interstitial area, we call it the interstitial fluid. The, the things that don't move out of the blood vessels, the things that stay in the blood vessels are all the cells. The cells cannot move out. They're too big, so they have to stay inside the blood vessel. But the things that do move out are the water and some small ions and small molecules. So those things do move out into the interstitial fluid. From there, the fluid moves into another vessel that we have in our body that's called a lymphatic vessel. So this is part of your lymphatic um, system. This is a lymphatic vessel. And on the inside of the lymphatic vessel, we have a fluid that's called lymph. So that 
interstitial fluid moves into the lymph vessel. It moves into the lymphatic vessel and it becomes lymph. Right? So where does the lymphatic vessel go? The lymphatic vessel goes all the way back up to your heart and then it, um, I'm going to go the other direction here, goes all the way back to your heart and then it dumps the lymph into your blood vessel. So now we've got a connection here of fluid, right? We're connecting the fluids in your body. So we're calling it a connective tissue. The blood gets connected to the interstitial fluid, which gets connected to the lymph, which gets dumped back into the blood again. So that's why it's a connective tissue. Okay? Yes? So is that essentially the blood plasma that's moving around? It's, it's, um, it is the fluid portion of the plasma. Okay. So there's other things in the blood. Uh, so there's other things in the plasma that just are not going to move out. So platelets, white blood cells. None of the cells things. move out. None of the um, plasma proteins. So there's a lot of plasma proteins. They also can't get out. Okay. Um, a lot of larger molecules can't get out. So the, but what does move through there is the water and the ions and the small molecules. Okay. Same thing, um, that's what goes into the lymph, the water, the small ion, the ions, and the small molecules. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So we're kind of cleansing the blood. We're moving the fluid through your body, all the different fluids. Okay? Okay, so that is, um, that's fluid connective tissue. And now we're going to move on to... Um, supporting connective tissue. All right, so supporting connective tissue is our last category of connective tissue, and it includes both cartilage and bone. There are three types of cartilage, and all three types of cartilage are going to be on your lab exam. Okay, so the three types are hyaline cartilage, which is what we see up at the top. And then we have elastic cartilage, and then we have fibrous cartilage. So we're going to look at all three of those. Now, the specialized cell in cartilage is called the chondrocyte. Chondrocyte. And chondrocytes have a very distinct look when they're stained before they're put under the microscope. To me, they look like little eyeballs. So we're going to look here. Um, these are the chondrocytes here. They, the cell membrane stains very darkly. So it's, it's uh, a dark stain, and then the nucleus stains dark too. So sometimes these chondrocytes like to be all by themselves, and sometimes they like to be with a partner, and then sometimes they like to be hang out in all, you know, with a bunch of other chondrocytes. Now the thing is, when you think of cartilage, do you think that they are fluidy at all? like the cartilage in your ear? No. So the matrix surrounding those cells is going to be more of a hard matrix. It's going to be more of a solid matrix, right? More than hard, it's solid. Solid's a better term for it. So what these little chondrocytes have to do is if they did not build a little cave for themselves, they would be crushed. So they build a little cave surrounding them, and that little cave is called a lacuna. Lacunae for plural, okay? That's so that they don't get crushed by the solid matrix. They're the ones, these cells, these chondrocytes, they're the ones that are producing the matrix, but they make sure that they keep a nice little, um, you know, cave around them so they don't get crushed. So we're going to find that in, we're going to find these chondrocytes in each of those three different types of cartilage. This first type of cartilage, and the name's missing up here, but this is hyaline cartilage. So we have to look for some distinguishing features of hyaline cartilage. First of all, where is it located? Hyaline cartilage is the most common cartilage in your body. And one of the most common places that we find it are on the tips of your long bones, right here, right on the tip of your long bone. 
So your long bones are like your arms. Your arms are long, right? There's cartilage at the tip, at the end of your knees, right? At the top of the knees, at the bottom of the femur, top of the tibia, there's cartilage in there. And so when the doctor tells you you're, you know, you've, you've um, have joint pain and that cartilage is gone and they're saying, you, you know, you've worn away your cartilage by your sport or by just degener de sorry, degeneration through age, that's what you're wearing down. You're wearing down that hyaline cartilage. It's right on the tip of that bone. So um, you'll see this picture. So you'll know it's at the tip of the long bone. That gives you a clue that that's hyaline cartilage. And you're also going to see this diagram of what you would see under a microscope. And a unique thing, I mean, the, the chondrocytes are always going to be this chondrocytes in cartilage. But if you look at the ground substance and the matrix in here, there's no protein fibers. So none of the protein fibers stain in hyaline cartilage. So you'll see it just looks real pink or purple in, in between the cells. So that's another clue that that is hyaline cartilage. So that's what we're looking for you to recognize that and in lab label that as hyaline cartilage. And in lecture, you need to know that it contains chondrocytes and that it's at the tip of the long bones. Then we have elastic cartilage. Here's elastic cartilage. Here's a big clue. This is where it's found, one of the places it's found. It's found in your ear. That again, that's the cartilage that you're going to pierce, right? It's found in your ear. When we look at the um, histology, so we're looking at the actual tissue itself under microscope, this is a diagram, we see again, there's those cells. They have a darkly stained cell membrane and a darkly stained nucleus. It looks like an eyeball. It's your chondrocyte. These chondrocytes in elastic cartilage, they like to be alone. They usually don't cluster together with other chondrocytes. That's another clue. And then the last clue is if you look inside, you can see these purple strands. If you remember when I was talking about those specialized fibers, those are what elastic fibers look like. Elastic protein fibers look like when they're stained. So now you can see the elastic protein fibers. So that's telling you that that is elastic cartilage. Right? Those are all the clues. For lecture, know that it is in the external ear and know um, that it contains the chondrocytes and the elastic fibers. Do you have like short answer questions on the lecture? Nope. No? All multiple choice. Oh, sweet. Process of elimination. <laughs> yeah. The last type of cartilage is called fibrous cartilage. Fibrous cartilage. So fibrous cartilage, fibrous sounds tough, like tough, like a tough layer, right? So this is a picture down here of your spine. And in between each of the vertebrae, in between each of the bones, we have what's called an intervertebral disc. And the outside of that intervertebral disc is surrounded by this fibrous cartilage, okay? So here we look at our chondrocytes. There's our chondrocyte. And in fibrous cartilage, um, the chondrocytes like a really big, roomy lacunae. So the white here, that's showing the roomy lacunae. And then you can see the chondrocyte inside the lacunae. Okay. We also see um, these, these um, fibers. So this is the reason why we call it fibrous. It's because those fibers are really tightly packed together. There's very little ground substance in between them. So it's fibrous. It's just really compacted together. And all the fibers are running in one direction, right? They're all running in one direction. And that's one layer of the intervertebral disc. And then the layer inside that layer, those fibers are going to run the other direction. And then the layer inside that, the fibers are going to go back and run the opposite direction. So they'll just keep being layered, and those fibers will keep being layered in, in opposite directions. And that forms a really tight lattice network. 
right? The inside of that intervertebral disc is filled with a jelly-like substance called the nucleus pulposus. And if something happens to this fibrous cartilage, that inside of that disc will start to bulge out and it'll, it'll actually break out away from that cartilage. It comes out. If it's completely <laughs> burst, it's called a herniated disc. If it's not completely burst and it's just bulging out, we call it a bulging disc. So the fibrous cartilage really helps to protect and cushion the bones and keep that um, nucleus pulposus, that jelly substance, inside. That really gives a lot of cushion. All right, so those are um, the three different types of cartilage, and those you have to be able to um, identify in the lab, and then lecture, you have to know location and function. The intervertebral disc. Yep. Yep. Intervertebral disc. Absolutely. Function is to resist compression. Um, it's um, it's strength, really. It's just um, it's protection strength. It's in the disc. It's really that nucleus pulposus that that is the cushion part of it, and then the fibrous cartilage just keeps it all intact inside there. Then we have, uh, and besides cartilage, under supporting connective tissue, we have bone. And this is showing a picture of compact bone. When we actually, when we start going into the skeletal system, we'll talk about the two different types of bone, compact and spongy. The cell in, in bone is called the osteocyte, osteocyte. And again, this is compact bone. So the osteocyte is a specialized cell, and we can see all of these little osteocytes here. And they go around in a little circle in compact bone. So we, we say that they're concentric. They go around in a circle, and then we see more out here. So they're forming, ro they're forming rows of concentric circles, right? They're all the way around several different circles. And then the matrix in between those cells is rock hard. It is calcified. So the matrix is calcified, and that makes bone really, really hard, right? But it also has fibers in there, and the fibers are collagen fibers. Collagen fibers are bendy. They help to make tissue bend. So like I said, that bone can bend a little bit before it snaps, before it breaks. Okay. All right, so that you have to identify as bone. That's it, just bone, right? And in lecture, you would need to know that the cell is an osteocyte. That's the specialized cell. You would need to know that the matrix is calcified and that there's also some collagen fibers in there that allow it to bend. So I'm just going to go through one more thing today, and then I'm going to finish up with I'm going to finish up with muscle tissue and neural tissue when we come back. On um, what is today? Monday. Wait, wait. No, wait Wednesday. 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 Today's Wednesday. In our lab test on one, two, and three is Monday too, right? So that's a lecture test. Oh, okay. Your lecture test is on Monday for chapters one through three. And you're going to take that in your lab. So during your lab hour. So half of you are taking it at 8 o'clock. The other half of you are taking it at 11, right? And then we're going to come back in here for a lecture. So some of you are coming here to have the lecture before you go take your lecture exam for 1 through 3. Some of you are coming here after your lecture exam, all right? During lecture, I'm going to finish up with the muscle tissue and the... Um, neural tissue, which is real short, and then we're going to go through chapter five, which is the integumentary system, and that's one of the shorter systems that we discuss uh, this semester, okay? So don't forget that. Yes? Will all of our lecture exams be taken in the lab? Mm, so maybe. 
I don't know. I'd have to look at the schedule to see, but yeah. I think it said both on the schedule. Yeah, okay. It, it alternates. Um, we use the tablets for the tests, don't we? You're going to use an iPad, our iPads. So one of the reasons why I like taking the lecture exam in lab is sometimes the Wi-Fi connection isn't awesome when we have, you know, 50 students in one room. Um, so that breaks it up, and you, there's only 24. And plus, it's, you know, a little more quiet. Um, so there's that reason. And then I also have a lecture material that I have to get through. And because I broke the units up into more exams, I used to have chapter one through five lecture exam. Well, now I'm taking out, now I'm taking units one through five and I'm putting two lecture exams in there and that takes up some of my time. Cool. So that's, that's the reason for that. <clears throat> um, so let's just finish up really quick here and show you a couple of um, what we call membranes. There are four different types of membranes in your body, and a membrane is a combination of epithelial tissue and connective tissue. So it's epithelial tissue plus connective tissue, right? So this is not going to be on your lab exam. You just have to identify what is the mem name of the membrane and where is it found in the body for the lecture exam. It's not on the lab exam. So the first thing is we look at um, the mucous membrane. Mucous membrane, the cells, the epithelial cells in the mucous membrane are going to secrete mucus. So you look at, well, where do we find, where do we secrete mucus? This is showing you your intestines because your intestines secrete mucus. It helps your, your food to slide through that tube. So mucous membrane, and you're going to want to know that it's found in your intestines. Right? There's other mucous membranes too, but that's the one I'm going to have you guys memorize. We also have a serous membrane. So here when we're looking at this picture here, these purple cells here, that's your epithelium, and the tissue beneath that here, that is your connective tissue. It happens to be areolar connective tissue, which you don't have to memorize what type of tissues are, it is. You just need to know that this membrane is half epithelial tissue, half connective tissue. Serous membranes, we know serous membranes. Give me an example of a serous membrane. Pericardium. Pericardium. What's another one? Pleura. What's another one? Peritoneum, right? So we know serous membrane and we know where they're located. The next type of membrane is called the cutaneous membrane. We're going to go into that quite in depth because that's part of the integumentary system for chapter five. We have a layer of stratified cells, stratified squamous cells. That's the epithelium, and then we have a layer of connective tissue. So that's what a membrane is. Epithelial tissue plus connective tissue. So that's a cutaneous membrane, which is um, your skin, and we are going to talk about that next Monday. And the last one that we have is the synovial membrane. Synovial membrane. So I don't know if you've heard of synovial fluid. That's found in surrounding your joints. Synovial membranes, they surround the joints and they produce a synovial fluid. And that's it. You just have to know where they're located. So where, so where's the cutaneous? Membrane? That's your skin. It's, skin? Yeah. it's your skin. Yep. Okay. Uh, it'll it'll be a multiple choice. Okay. So, so you just have to choose like, it. Okay. Yep.